All right. Well, I uh, just want to give major, major kudos to uh, fantastic. I've, I've said on this program many times before, if you can only listen to one podcast, you are only allowed one single podcast and that's it. You need to listen to the Bible thumping wingnut. If that, if you're only allowed one, listen to that. The Bible thumping wingnut is fantastic and good, solid, gutsy. If I had a mic drop soundbite, I'd use it. Warning, the Bible Thumping Wingnut podcast is a Christian program that may contain graphic descriptions of death, burial, and resurrection, and may not be suitable for those who deny the God who created them. Repentance and faith is advised. You're listening to the Bible Thumping Wingnut Podcast, the podcast that's safe for the whole family. Unless your family contains professing atheists. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Bible Thumping Wingnut Show, Sunday nights. Uh, this is episode 384 with Pastor Steve Camp. Thanks for joining me, uh, whether it is live on uh, May 3rd or via podcast or uh, repost it on Facebook or wherever you're listening. Thank you so much for listening. Big shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. They're the ones who make this possible. If you enjoy this content, if you've been blessed and challenged and encouraged by my podcast or any of the podcasts on the network, uh, Biblical Christianity's Marketplace of Ideas, the Bible Thumping Wing Net Network. Uh, if you have been blessed and you have the means and you've already given to your local church and you'd like to support us, we could really use your help. Go to BibleThumpingWingnet.com and click on Support Our Ministry. Go to BibleThumpingWingnet.com for all the other content, including blogs and over a dozen active uh, podcasts. And I say biblical Christianity's marketplace of ideas because everyone in there is of sound Christian doctrine. However, on the tertiary and secondary issues, they have some disagreements. And uh, it makes for a tremendous platform for learning, for debate, and uh, just to hear all that biblical Christianity entails. And hear different viewpoints from a truly biblical perspective. No heretics there. All right. Um, what else did I want to say? The Builders Summit, November 13th, the Builders Summit. Builders Summit is a, uh, we'd call it a retreat, but men do not retreat. The Builders Summit is a weekend for men who want to honor God in everything that they do. And they're in, they are interested in building themselves up uh, in the Word. Uh, the Builders Summit, November 13, 14, and 15. Right now, uh, early bird registration. It's only $169. And that includes lodging, Friday night, Saturday night, and six meals, two snacks, all the activities and all the uh, sessions, everything. Great, great time, great price. Everyone who attended last year, everyone loved it and said they're coming back. Everybody. So, buildersummit.org. Check it out. Uh, early bird registration will not last forever. All right. A uh, person that that I am very fond of, uh, that I, I don't speak to regularly, but we follow each other on social media and interact there occasionally, is uh, Pastor Steve Camp. Welcome to uh, the Bible Thumping Wingnut podcast once again. How are you, sir? Got to unmute yourself. Very good, Tim. Great to be with you. And though I'm a Cubs fan, you're a Boston fan. We're living proof we can coexist. Yes. yes. <laughs> Together. Great to be with you on this program. Hey, you. this is the first time I have had any guest on whether it was a repeat person or a first timer, you're, you're a repeat uh, guest on the show. 
This is the first time that when I said, hey, do you want to come on the show? You never asked, what are we going to talk about? Yeah, I trust you. And you know, this, this, as I love your network, uh, the scriptures are sufficient for all matters of life and godliness. So I figure anything is, is good fodder for encouragement to the body of Christ and to process through the onion skin of scriptures. So uh, you're, you're a, a very well uh, versed interviewer. And so I trust you in that. So anything that you would like to discuss tonight, I'm happy to venture into. All right. Now, one, I I follow you. I, the, another reason why I love having you on, not only did I listen to and still enjoy uh, your Christian music, but oh, thank you. the the uh, the thing that cost you your your career was standing up for biblical principles for for righteousness and yep. being bold and not afraid to speak up. And uh, you, we've gotten older now, and you're still bold and not afraid to to speak uh, the truth. And uh, not everybody accepts it, and it gets you into a lot of trouble. And uh, sometimes we disagree, uh, yeah. but we disagree. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like I'm... I feel like I'm better friends with you than I should be because <laughs> we haven't spent that much time together, but I, I somehow I feel that we have a, a kindred spirit just by oh. our, our, the interactions that we've had and the interactions we've had online. Absolutely. Well, what you're referring to initially was the 107 theses. Uh, I wasn't trying to better Luther in his 95 theses. I just had more ground to cover than papal indulgences when it came to the Christian music industry back in 97 when those were released on October 31st of that year. Uh, I was concerned about all the secular ownership of publishers, music companies, and so forth that still exist today. And, you know, if you take the king's money, you're subject to the king. If you take non-believers spiritually funding a Christian enterprise. You're what Second Corinthians 6, I believe, firmly says that you are heterozygantes. You are unequally yoked and in a common ministry or spiritual enterprise. And so it was, uh, it was a no-brainer, actually, Tim. I don't know how much courage it took, but I was in Europe and traveling and even ministering in uh, Germany and in England and different nations there within Europe and, and the British Commonwealth, as it were. And I took some time off and went down to Wittenberg, and I saw where Luther had his table talk and where his church was and what he had walked those same cobblestones and had called a recalcitrant Roman church to repentance. And so I started to write on anything I could find. Uh, these 107 theses, they came out that October 31st, and I am so glad the Lord did not allow me to know the fallout that would have occurred because I think I would have never done it. Uh, but here, it was um, it was an earth-shattering time for myself, for my family. Uh, people that I'd worked with for years in Christian music said they didn't want anything to do with me, and I thought every opinion was welcome in a pluralistic environment. I guess uh, it's not really true, is it? And uh, so, you know, you I think... Tim, you and I are of the age that we learn that what gives us the fortitude, and I loved what you said about the men's time, it's not a retreat, it's an advance. It's equipping men of God to do the work of God, the will of God, by the Word of God. And when we are uh, convicted that we fear God more than man, then the choice is simple. If we make allowances and stutter in the face of opposition, then we're doing the Nashville two-step with the truth rather than speaking clearly on the things of God. So that was the history behind that. And here we are, you know, years later, and uh, you and I both are still carrying on by God's grace alone. That's not a boast, but just by God's grace alone to hopefully stand for what is good, righteous, and true. And in the, in the environment that we find ourselves in, not only is the political environment walking around with both feet planted firmly in midair, but also we see evangelical Christianity 
uncertain as to its identification and its calling. And uh, so the need is just as profound now as it was back then. Hey, let's talk about COVID-19. I thought we'd get to that. <laughs> yeah. I oh, Let me tell you where the two things that I want to talk about. Now, yep. I apologize. A few months ago, you sent me a direct message on Twitter. You said, I have a great idea for a podcast. And I never got back to you. I somehow yeah. I somehow I was like I I, I got to answer that and forgot about it. Um, but I don't know if we want to hit that. But the two things I want to talk about I want to talk about COVID nineteen because uh, you have been speaking ab out about it a lot, and your um, I, I just want to interact with your thoughts on it and uh, maybe push back a little bit. Um, sure. Anybody who listens or watches the show. Uh, I'd like to push back whether I agree with the guest or not, just to, to challenge some ideas. And then, then I want to end with, uh, a, a list. See, I, I thought of doing a name association and giving you some names and, you know, that's a popular thing, you know, give me what one word think comes to your mind when you, when I say the name, uh, I want, kind of want to do that, but I found a list, somebody's list of top 10 active pastors today and i know this will be entertaining uh and educational for some to hear your thoughts on this top 10 list are you up for that task oh i'd be happy to all right we'll do we'll do that in, in uh in the last uh 20 or 20 minutes or so okay so and good. we never talked about how long we're gonna go i usually go an hour to in between an hour and an hour and a half that's all right with you. I, I am good for all of that duration, as little or as much of that as, as you want to lead. I'll follow you. All righty. Um, COVID-19. Yep. Has your church, what impact has COVID-19 had on your, the way you uh, conduct your weekly uh, ministry in your church? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, very little. Uh, we've never closed our doors during this time. Uh, we have never shut down Cross Life, which is our midweek home fellowship kind of gathering. Uh, Band of Brothers every other Saturday morning at local coffee shops. The one that we love to meet at is Three Baristas. Uh, 